Hi everyone, my name is Never Martel, and in this tutorial I'll be teaching you my workflow for post processing and color grading in Photoshop and After Effects. We'll be going over the exporting of files in Blender and how to import them into the aforementioned programs, some file types, the process I usually go over in my workflow, and some extra info that might be useful. With that being said, let's get into it. The first thing we'll do is export our files from Blender. We're going to be using the compositor for that, which you can access by going to the compositing tab. The first thing we'll do is select our render process by going into the view layer panel. You can see that the combined path is on by default. That's our full image. There are other paths such as Z and Mist, which can be used to set up fake fog or depth of field outside of Blender. There are many other paths such as diffuse, glossy transmission, volume, and much more that can be really useful. I'm going to be selecting Emission, Mist, and the noising that it passes. You can see what each pass does by going to the render view, and on the menu next to it, there's an option to see each pass individually. There is also the Cryptomat pass, which allows for great control over your post process. You can select Cryptomats by object, material, or asset. I'll be selecting objects. For this scene, I also use light groups in order to set up the night version later. You can create groups by clicking the plus icon right here and then renaming them. Then, you can select your lights, going to the Object Properties panel, and under Shading, you can add your lights to the group. I've set groups for the HDRI, for some pool lights, for some light lights, and for some emissive objects. In order to show image previews in the compositor, you need to make sure the backdrop option is active. Then, you can Ctrl Shift click the node output you want to preview, and the preview will then appear. You can press V to zoom it out, Alt V to zoom it in, and you can Alt drag to drag the preview around. You will need to render your scene first before you can see the preview for all your passes. You can simply do a test render with lower samples and resolution. For my workflow, I use DXR because it has many benefits over PNG, such as it being smaller when using the right settings while still retaining quality. The main thing with DXR is that it supports multiple layers, which means that all our render passes will be stored in a single file. It also supports 32 bits per channel color, which is pretty useful for color grading. But even though it's an awesome format, it still has some drawbacks. The main one being that it doesn't store any color transform information. What this means is that it doesn't understand Filmic or HGX, which means that the colors will not look the same outside of Blender. There are ways around this, and I'll be explaining them, but you have to consider if it's worth the extra effort. I will be using EXR in this tutorial. Feel free to use PNG or any other format you'd like, but be aware that some things will be different. I'll make two file output nodes. I'll select the first one, open the end panel, Go to Node, Properties, and then add the inputs for our render layers. Except the Cryptomat and Mist passes, we'll leave those for the second node. I'll connect them. But make sure the light group passes go through the noise node first, as they will still look noisy. Connect the noisy image to the noise node, and connect to the noisy normal and the noisy albedo. Then connect to the noise image to the file output node. Select the file output node and change the file format to OpenEXR Multilayer. Then change the codec to deep.dwi lossy. Compared to zip, it's usually smaller than PNG and the quality loss will be so small that it's imperceptible. Selecting float full or float half will have no difference here, so we can just leave it as is. Rename the inputs accordingly. Select the second file output node and add the inputs. Connect the cryptomat and the mist passes. Make sure the mist pass goes through the noise node as well. Go to the file output node, change the file format to OpenXR multilayer, but make sure the codec stays as zip lossless and the color depth stays as float full. Changing those will corrupt the cryptomats. 
Keeping the codec as zip lossless will be fine for just cryptomats because it will still be smaller than a PNG. But if we were to use zip for every single render layer, we would get files that could be over 300 megabytes, so it's just best to avoid it. You need to make sure that the input names are the same as the render layers. In this case, CryptoObject00, CryptoObject01, CryptoObject02, and Mist. Now you can just set up the folders where you want to export your files and render. Now that we've got our scene rendered, all we have to do is import our files into Photoshop. But you'll notice that if you try to do this right now, it'll just show up as a black screen. This is because Photoshop doesn't properly support the XRs. But we can fix this with an add-on. Just open your browser and go to exr.io.com. Once the page loads, just click the download button. And once it's undownloaded, just install the file. Once it's done installing, you can restart Photoshop. And you can import your file. This pop-up will show up. We don't need to change anything here, so just click the open button. And you'll see that your EXR will import, but the color still won't look correct as I mentioned before. We can fix this with yet another add-on. Go back into your browser and open another website, fnord.com. Once it's open, scroll down until you find open color I.O. Then download the Photoshop version. Open it with 7 zipper WinRAR and you'll notice this plugin file. What we need to do is drag it into the Photoshop plugins folder. To do that, we need to go into our main drive, into the programs folder, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, plugins, and just drop the plugin right there. Once that's done, there's still one more thing we need to do. We need to go into the Blender installation folder. Just go back to programs, then find Blender Foundation, Blender, then click the version, the folder with the version you have, Data Files, and Color Management. We're going to copy this folder. Now we need to open the Program Data folder. To do that, just press Windows and R. Then type percentage sign, Program Data, percentage sign. Now create a new folder. Name it OpenColorIO. And inside that folder, paste the file we just copied. I'll rename it to Blender so it's easier to find later. Now you can just restart Photoshop. Import our file again. And now if you go into Filter, you'll find that there's a new filter called OpenColorIO. Open the filter. And you'll see that under configuration, there's a, there's an option named Blender. Now, uh, what we need to do is change the output space to either Filmic sRGB or AGX space sRGB. In my case, I'll do AGX. You still won't look correct, so we have to go into the filter again and change the input space to sRGB and the output space to Linear Rec 709. Now it will look correct. There is a way to simplify this with Photoshop Actions. Just go into Window, click the Actions button, and this tab will appear. Press the folder icon to create a new folder, name it whatever you like. Then press the plus icon to create an action. I'll name it EXR to AGX. Once you create it, you'll start recording. We have to redo the steps we just did. Go to Open Color I.O., change the input space to Linear Rec 709, and the, output, and, the, and the output space to AGX base sRGB. Then go back into the filter, set the input space to sRGB, and the output space to Linear X709. Once that's done, you can click the stop button, and your action will be done. Feel free to create another action for Filmic if you want. This is that extra setup work I mentioned before, but now that it's done, all you have to do is run the action.
Okay, let's get started with the post processing. I'll bring in the XR into Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is select all layers and then press Ctrl G to group them. I'm going to right click the group and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. I can now double click the smart object and it will open in a new file. I'll disable all layers I don't need. I'll leave only the ones I'm going to use, in this case the main one. Now I'm going to go into the actions I'm going, and I'm going to run my color converting action. Now I can save the file. And if I go back into the main file, the changes will be applied there. What I'm going to do now is go into image, mode, and change it to 16 bits per channel. I'll click don't merge. What this does is give us access to most filters in Photoshop, as we wouldn't be able to use them in 32 bits. But we can still go back into the smart object and make any changes there while keeping all the data from the EXR. I'll go back into the smart object. I can always make more adjustments such as exposure and curves and such. You can always go back and do more adjustments in the smart object. But remember to save always, so the changes are reflected in the, in the main file. I'll open the CryptoMat file. You'll notice many layers, each corresponding to each object you had in your scene. You can select them in, directly in the image by control clicking them. I'll select all the objects corresponding to my character. Remember to hold Ctrl while selecting so you can make a multiple selection. Now that I've got them selected, I'll copy them with Ctrl C. I'll go back into my main file and I'll place it with Ctrl V while holding Shift so the layers stay in the right position. Now I'll press Ctrl E to merge all the layers. And you'll notice that there's some seams between the objects. You can fix this by duplicating the layers with Ctrl J twice. Then, press Ctrl E twice to merge them back, and the seams will be gone. Now you have a perfect mask of your objects, in my case the character. I'll hide the layer for now. What I'm going to do now is Ctrl click the preview so I get a perfect selection of the character. I'm going to go into the main layer, and I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate it. Now I've got a perfect cutout of the character. I'm going to make a new layer, place it behind the character, and making sure my color is white, I'll press Alt Backspace to fill it. Now I'll Ctrl click the preview of the cryptomat again, and I'll click the mask button. I'll feather the mask by about 15 pixels. This will give us a soft outline that can be used for separating the character from the background. You can always delete the parts you don't want with the, with the eraser tool. Reduce the opacity of the layer so it's not too noticeable. I consider this to be a cheap but easy way to provide separation between the character and the background. Just make sure the effect is subtle or it will break. You can do much more with Cryptomats, since you can select any object you have in your scene, you have lots of control for doing very specific edits. Now I'm going to go back into the smart object and I'm going to grab the emission layer. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it into the main file. I'll delete the parts I don't need. Now I'll go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'll set it to about 3 pixels. I'll set the layer mode to Linear Dodge, and I'll have bloom on the emissive parts of our scene. There is also another method for doing bloom, in a more general way. I'll press Ctrl Shift Alt E to match everything into a new layer. I'll press Ctrl L to open the levels filter and bring in the blacks until we can only see the brightest parts of the image. I'll bring the whites in a little so it's so they're brighter. I'll press OK. And now I'll add some Gaussian blur. About 50 pixels should do. I'll set the layer to linear dodge. And that will add some bloom on the brightest parts of our image. You can always adjust the opacity if the effect is too strong. I'll make a lens flare effect now. I'll make a new layer and fill it with black. I'll make sure my, my color is set as black. Then I'll press Alt Backspace to fill it. 
I'm going to convert the layer into a smart object. Now I'm going to go into filter, render, and lens flare. I'm going to set the lens flare in the position of the brightest source of light, in this case the sun. I'm now going to set the, the blending mode to screen. I'll use the mask that it creates to delete the parts I don't need. You can always reduce the opacity to make the effect more subtle. There's also a lens of reflection effect that I do. I'll press Ctrl Shift Alt E to merge everything into a new layer again, and I'll open the levels filter once more. I'll bring in the blacks until we can only see the brightest parts of the image. I'll bring the whites in a bit too. I'll press OK. I'll go into Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. Now I'll select the shape I want. I usually do hexagon. I'll set the radius to the max. I can also adjust the blade curvature. Adjust it to your liking. And I'm going to set the specular highlights brightness to 100. I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to press Ctrl T to transform the layer. I'm going to right click and rotate 180 degrees. I'm going to scale the layer up a bit. Now I'm going to set it to screen and I'll reduce the opacity. You can always delete the parts you don't want. Now for lens dirt, the best way to do lens dirt is by just using an image. You can find many on the internet and you can also look for gamey and bees or reshades. They usually have good lens dirt images. I'll bring one I already have saved. I'll just scale it up. And then I'll set it to screen. I'll adjust the opacity to my liking. And that's lens dirt done. Let's get started with the color grading. I'm going to press Ctrl Shift Alt D to merge everything into one new layer. I'm going to right click it and convert it to a smart object. Now I'll open the camera raw filter. You can do that either by going to, into filter, camera raw filter, or just by pressing Ctrl Shift A. First in the light tab. You can change settings such as exposure, contrast and the light values of your image. I'll raise the exposure a bit. I'll raise the contrast as well to make the image look punchier. I'll lower the highlights a bit to reduce clipping. You can see clipping in the histogram up here by clicking the arrows at the corners. I'll lower the shadows as well to make them more visible. I'll raise the whites to bring, to bring the brightness to the image. And I'll raise the blacks as well. You can already notice the image starts to look a little more punchy. Now onto the color tab. I'm going to raise the temperature to make the image a bit warmer. I'm going to tint it a bit to green. I'm going to bring the vibrance up to make the colors pop. But I'm going to lower the saturation. This is a personal choice. All of these settings are up to your personal preference, so make sure to experiment with them. Onto the effects tab, I'll raise the texture to bring in some detail. I'll lower the clarity to make the image a little bit softer. I'll dehaze it a bit. And I'm gonna add some fill grain as I usually like to add it. Now for the curves tab, I usually don't use it as for me it does the same thing as the light tab, but feel free to use it if you want. Onto the color mixer tab, start, starting with the hue. I'm going to bring the reds in to make them a little bit deeper. I'll make the oranges warmer as well. I'll bring the greens a bit to yellow to make the image even warmer. And I'll bring the blues a little to purple as they look too cyan. Now for the saturation. I'm going to desaturate the reds a bit. And I'll desaturate the oranges as well as the floor is too distracting. I'll saturate the yellows to make the drink in the background pop. I'll desaturate the greens and blues as well. Now for luminance, 
I'm gonna make the reds and the greens brighter. Remember that all these settings are up to your personal preference, so make sure to experiment. Now for the color grading tab. This is probably the part that makes the most difference and that gives the most room for experimentation. I like the mid-tones a bit orange to emphasize the warm look. I'll bring the highlights to a reddish orange and I'll make the shadows blue to contrast with the warm scene. Now in the detail tab, I'll add a bit of sharpening to bring some detail in. Now in the optics tab, I'll add something I think by dragging the slider down. Make sure it's settled or it's not going to look very good. Now our color grading is done. There is also an option to add LUTs in Photoshop by going into the adjustment layers and adding a color lookup filter. You can click load 3D LUT to choose LUTs, or you can click the option at the top to load one from your computer. You can find many LUTs online, either free or paid. The ones from Photoshop look good as well too, but I'm not going to use them in this case. Now that it's done, you can export your image, go into File, Export, Export As, and choose your format. JPEG is usually fine unless you need the transparency, just make sure the quality slider is set to max. Then click Export. With EXRs and post-processing, we can even turn day scenes into night scenes. I'll show you how to do that. I'll make a new file. Now, I'm going to repeat that process of grouping the layers, turning them into a smart object, and then doing the color conversion. Make sure you convert the colors for all layers. I'll make sure only the base layer is visible. I'm going to create an exposure layer and I'm going to lower it until it's really dark. I'm going to do minus 5.5. I'm going to add a brightness contrast layer and I'm going to lower the contrast a bit. I'll add the curves layer and bring the highlights down a bit. And bring the shadows up. You can also change the clip values on the edges. I'm going to create another curves layer, but this time I'm going to change it from RGB to red. I'm going to bring red down a bit. I'm going to change it to green and I'm going to bring it down as well. I'm going to change it to blue and then I'm going to raise it. It's starting to look like night time now. I'm going to press Ctrl Shift Alt E and I'm going to convert it into a smart object. I'm going to go into the camera raw filter and go to the color grading tab. I'll make the mid tones blue and I'll do that for the shadows as well. But make sure you're careful changing the shadows because they make a big difference. I'm going to make the highlights cyan. I'm going to click OK to close camera row. And I'm going to turn on the other layers. I'm going to change their blending mode to linear touch. Now we have a scene that looks like nighttime. I'm going to save the file. And back in the main file, I'm going to add the effects that I added in the previous section. I'll do the color grading now. I'll just bring the highlights down a bit and the shadows up, while also adjusting the other options to my liking. I'll make the image a bit color and tinted to magenta, 
I'll calibrate the image to emphasize the arm lights and bring some attention to the pool as well. And that's the day tonight done. Alright, so we're done with the post processing in Photoshop, but I'll go over it in After Effects as well. Enjoy! Let's get started with the After Effects section of this tutorial. Importing XRs into After Effects is much easier than it is in Photoshop, as long as you're using at least the 2023 version of the program. Go into the Project panel, right click it, go into Import, File, go to the folder where your render is, and click the XR you want to import. If it's an animation, make sure to select the first frame and then make sure the Open XR Sequence option is active. Then click Import. Now right click the file you just imported, go into Interpret Footage, click Main, and change the frame rate to whatever you render with. In my case, it's 24 frames per second. Now you can bring it into a new composition. You'll notice that it looks black just like it did in Photoshop. Go into the Effects and Presets panel, search for Extractor and add it to your layer. Now you click the Layers option and you can select your main layer. You can also select any other render passes you have. You'll notice that once again the colors don't look right. We'll fix this by importing the Blender Color Configuration file just like we did in the Photoshop section. Go into your main drive, go into Programs, Blender Foundation, Blender, the folder with the version you have installed, Data Files, and copy the Color Management folder. Now go back into Programs, Adobe, Adobe After Effects, Support Files, and go into the Open Color AO Configs folder. Paste the folder you just copied there. I'll rename it to Blender so it's easier to find. Now just restart After Effects. Now you can go back into the project panel, and you'll notice this option at the bottom. In your case it you might say it bits per channel. Open it, and make sure the bit depth is set to 32 bits per channel. In the color management tab, make sure the color engine is set to OCIO color managed, and the, IC and the OCIO configuration must be set to Blender. Now you can go into the display color space, and change it to either IGX or Filmic and your colors will look right now. Be aware that this setup only works if you're using at least a 2023 version of, of After Effects, and the other versions won't be able to use this setup, and you'll need the OCIO and the XR plugins from fnor.com. I'm not going to explain how to install them here, but you can search for guides and you'll find how to install them. Let's get started with the post-processing in After Effects. We'll be using many of the concepts we used in the Photoshop section, but adapted to After Effects. I'll start by adding an exposure effect. You'll notice that the effects have a number next to them, being 32, 16 or 8. Try to use 32 when possible, because the effects with lower numbers may ruin the values of your render. I'll be importing a Cryptomat now. Now I'll bring it into the composition, and I'll add the Cryptomat effect. I can select whatever I want to show up. I select multiple objects by holding Shift. I'm going to set the output to matted colors, and I'm going to hide the cryptomat layer. I'm going to duplicate the main layer, and set its track mat to the cryptomat layer. Now I'm going to duplicate the cryptomat layer, and place it behind the layer we just duplicated. I'll make it visible again, and I'm going to add a fast box blur effect. I'm going to set it to about 10 or 20. 
Now I'll adjust the opacity by pressing T while hovering the layer. I'll right click the composition and add a new adjustment layer. I'll add a glow effect. And I'll adjust the threshold, the radius, and the intensity. I can also adjust the opacity as well. I'll make a lens flare effect by adding it to the black solid. I'm gonna add a lens flare effect. You'll notice that it has a nade next to it. That's why you made it to a black solid so it doesn't affect the other layers. I'll set the blending mode to add. And I'll adjust where I want the flare to be. You can adjust the brightness and also blend with the original image. I'll add a lens reflection effect by duplicating the main layer and bringing it to the top. I'll add a levels effect. And I'll bring in the blacks. And make sure to turn on clip to output. I'll add a camera lens blur effect. I'm going to change the radius. You can also change the shape. I'll leave it at hexagon. You can change the roundness. I'll press R over the layer to rotate it by 180 degrees. Then I'll press S to scale it up. I'll set, it, I'll set the layer to add and adjust the opacity. For lens dirt, just like in Photoshop, it's best to just use an image. I'll bring one in. I'll adjust its scale by pressing S. I'll set it to add. I'll adjust the opacity by pressing T. For film grain, I'll create a new black solid. I'll add a grain effect. I'll set the viewing mode to final output. I'll set the color to monochromatic. And I'll adjust the intensity and the size. You can also go into animation and set the animation speed. Now I'll set the layer to add and reduce the opacity. To get started with the color grading, I'll create a new adjustment layer. I'll add a lumetric color effect. We'll start with the basic correction tab. It works a lot like, cam like camera raw to lighten color tabs. I'll lower the color temperature a bit and I'll raise the tint. I'll raise the exposure a bit and raise the contrast. I'll mess with the color values as well. In the Creative tab, we have adjustments like Vibrance, Saturation, and Sharpening. We can also select LUTs here. I'll raise the Vibrance a bit. For the Curves tab, it works a little different than the curves in Photoshop. We have the normal RGB curves, we have curves for Saturation, Hue, and Luminosity. I'll make some adjustments to the curves. In the color wheels tab, we have our color grading options just like in Camera Raw. I'll do a simple color grade. 
the AHL secondary tab has some more adjustments, but I won't be changing anything here. Finally, there is the vignette tab, where you can add some vignettes. Make sure it's not too strong. I'm gonna do the day-to-night color grid in After Effects. I'll separate the background from the foreground with the crypto mat. I'll duplicate the main layer and set the, and set the track mat to the crypto mat layer. Now I have just the foreground isolated. I'll go into the background layer and add, and add an exposure effect. I'll set it to minus 12. Now I'm going to add a lumetric color effect. And I'm going to adjust the contrast. In the creative tab, you can experiment with LUTs to get one that helps with the nighttime look. I won't be using any here. I'm going to adjust the curves. I'm going to lower the red and the green while raising the blue. Now, I'm going to go into the color wheels and adjust the shadows and the midtones to blue and the highlights to cyan. Keep making adjustments until you get the look you want. For the, ground, for the foreground, I'll add an, another exposure effect. I'll set it to minus 8. I'm, I'm going to add a lumetric color effect. And I'm going to make adjustments as well. I'll adjust the contrast and I'll adjust the curves as well. I'll now duplicate the main layer and bring it to the top. I'm going to go into the extractor effect and I'm going to select the emission layer. I'm going to remove the other effects and I can adjust the exposure. I can also set it to add and I can duplicate it and add a glow effect. You can add in the effects as I explained in the previous section and then do the color grading. I'll do a simple color grade here. Now for exporting your files from After Effects, open the render queue by pressing Ctrl and M. In the render settings, set the color depth to 32 bits per channel. Select your output folder. In the output model, go into format options to select your bitrate. The higher the bitrate is, the more quality you'll have, but the bigger the file will be. Giving things up to DR1 pass is fine, and anything about above 8 megabits per second is fine. Still in the output model, go into the color tab and change the color output space to the same one that you're using. In my case, it's HEX. Now you can just hit render. So that's it for post processing and color grading. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully we learned something from it.